we start with the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, the most gracious, the most kind, subhanahu wa ta'ala, glory be to him. There is nothing in the heavens or on earth, or nothing in the heavens or in the earth, but glorifies the name of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we are honored to join that dhikr, to join that tasbih. If you notice, brothers and sisters, in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, before Allah invites us to come and pray Jumu'ah in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, that actually comes at the end of the Surah, the last three ayat. Before that, Allah wants to remind you and to kind of put you in your place. The first ayah in Surah Al-Jumu'ah talks about how يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ To Allah glorifies whatsoever is in the skies and whatsoever is in the earth. He's the King, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, the Holy One, Al-Aziz, the Mighty, Al-Hakim, the All-Wise, All-Knowledgeable. Allah puts that statement in the beginning of Surah Al-Jum'ah before He invites you so that His invitation is just for you to join the rest of the universe. Because the universe is already glorifying. The question, would you like to join or not? And Allah says, if you join, there is a lot of goodness in it, even though you have to leave your business and then come back to it. Come to the dhikr of Allah and leave business, leave selling. That's better for you if you know. So we say, Ya Allah, if you know, we don't even need to know. We say, Sami'na wa ata'na. We listen because you're the all knowing and the all hearing. We know because you told us, and now we know. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, after the salah is done, then go back to your business and seek of Allah's pleasure. Seek of Allah's pleasure and Allah's bounty and Allah's income. So interestingly, it's been imprinted in our heads that Friday is a holiday, day off from work. Actually, based on the Quran, Friday is not a day off. Because Allah says, come from work, and then He says, go back to work. According to the ayat at the end of Surah Al-Jumu'ah. The whole idea of having a day off does not even exist in our history. Every day is a day on, and every day is a day off. Muslims used to work from Fajr to Salat al-Asr, from Asr to Maghrib is family time, from Maghrib to Isha is Masjid time, from Isha till Fajr is Allah's time, and sleeping time. The day was every day is a working day and every day is a day off. You don't have to worry and you give everyone his haqq. Subhanallah. And that's why at a time we were very productive. Right now we stop working Thursday noon. Why? I'm preparing for Friday. <laughs> then Saturday is we're not working either. Why? I'm recovering from Friday. I need a rest from the rest and a vacation from the vacation. And by Monday noon, you start functioning. And that has put us back in comparison with other nations. Subhanallah. But the day of Friday is a day of work, a day of ibadah, a day of tasbih, a day of asking Allah's forgiveness and worship, and a day of asking Allah's grace and sustenance and income. So alhamdulillah that we are here and we're not there. Alhamdulillah we answer the call of Allah. So may Allah Azza wa Jal, just for that answer, may Allah accept it from us and open our minds and hearts to the truth and to following the truth. Amin Ya Rabbi. Brothers and sisters, SubhanAllah, time is running and time is passing. The young is becoming old and the old is passing to the next stage of life. The one who's not born, they're becoming born and then they get older and then older and then older and the stages of life, we all go through it. And the question is, when is it that you're going to wake up? You see, Allah's blessing is that you don't come to life 5 to 10 years, 14 years. Most of the dogs and cats live at that for that time. Every one year, for us, 
in the life of a, a cat or a dog is seven years. So when a dog lives 14, you multiply 14 by seven. That's their age comparing to our age. So imagine if we come to life and we die after 14 years. You know, this is the most time that you are clueless. You're moving from childhood to puberty. And when kids move to puberty, suddenly, overnight, they think they know everything now. Just by the fact that they became, their voice became deep, their shoulders are wider, they have now a little mustache and this, and they have an opinion. They think, now I know what I want in life. Don't talk to me. Don't tell me what I want. Subhanallah. A day before, you were a child. Now, you are one day old or one year old as an adult. But what do they do? They count all the years from birth. No, don't count all the years from birth. Because these years don't count. You were a child. As an adult, maybe you are one year old. <coughs> what does a one year old do? At least, we one year old start walking, start learning two years old, three years old. So subhanAllah, that's why Islam does not have the concept of a teenager, meaning you're clueless. It has the concept of a child, young man, then a full man. And a young man is a young man under training, or a young woman under training to become old, subhanAllah. So, when we look at Allah's blessing, that Allah is giving you time, time, so that you grow. And Allah hinted that by the age of 40, you reach your complete maturity. You know, you move from being a baby to having a baby. That's a full cycle in life. A child, baby, then older, then older in education, work, getting married, and then you have a baby and your baby is growing. So now you've, you've been in all position in life. So Allah expects you to mature by that age. Hmm? Of course, by Allah gave you a system so that between childhood and maturity, you don't ruin yourself and ruin your life and say, I'm going to try everything in the world wrong or bad or this until I learn by trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. No, no, no. Allah gives you a way of life, a system that if you follow, you will be safe until your maturity and your wisdom and your knowledge catches up with your actions. So you act first, you protect yourself from harm, you do what is fard, until your knowledge and experience in life catches up to that. But the problem, brothers and sisters, what's happening is today, you know, there was just a hundred years ago. Ask your grandfather, by age 15, by age 10, there is no elementary school, there is no middle school, there is no high school. So this is all in the last 100 years. So by age 10, the kid cannot wait to go to the next stage of his, in his life, which is working with dad. So by age 15, he has five years of experience of work. Of course, not a full-time work, but helping, helping. And by the time 15 or 16, the boy is full body. MashaAllah. He has just only a few inches to grow for the rest of his life. But otherwise, he has sh shot up, you know, with growth. So by age 15, 16, most of the ask your grandfather, they were getting married by then. If you hit 18, people will look at you and say, what's going on? Why you're not married yet? Right? You don't have to go back 1400 years. Just ask your grandmother. I did that in our masjid in Saratoga. And I asked people to ask their grandmothers how old was she when she got married. And they were shocked. They didn't know that their grandmothers got married around age 13. 9, 10, 11, 12, and they're like, oh my God, I was in shock talking about Prophet Muhammad marrying Aisha. It turned to be, I don't have to go back to Aisha, I have to go back to my grandmother <laughs> that I've seen. Radiallahu anha wa Right? So the thing is, people used to mature early. The maturity that people used to get by 15, 16, in today's system, by the time you graduate from college and you get to school, you're getting it by 25, 26. So the maturity shot back 10 years. Then right now, actually not right now, 10 years ago, the maturity of a 25, only a 35 years old, you can talk to him and have a conversation, serious conversation. Because before that, if half of the conversation is not laughing and joking, he's not interested in talking to you. I mean, that's nice when you are 12 years old, 11, 10, 8, 9. But now you're 25, 26, the whole thing has to be like laughing and otherwise it's not fun, as if we live our life by one principle. Is it fun or not? 
So now the 35 years old is having the maturity of a 25 years old just 10, 15 years ago. And uh, one who's, you know, 45 is having the maturity of a third, and, and, and you can tell. So time is passing. And Allah Azza wa Jal warned us in the Quran. Give us a warning. Sayyid wa l'asr, inna l'insana lafi khus. By time, truly human beings or mankind or the human is in a great loss. There's one tradition that we came to know. It was just this birthday parties. So, you know, children when they, you know, and even adults I'm finding out recently they're having a birthday. I mean, I mean, I don't know how you're 40 and you're celebrating your birthday, I don't know. So when I am invited and now they're like inviting me, right? I don't know what's going on. But nevertheless, <laughs> I, I say, are you celebrating gaining one year or you should be crying for losing one year? Because now that year is gone. You're closer to death one year. You didn't gain anything. Show me the year. Is it in your pocket? Can you give it to me? You can't. It's gone. So the whole idea, if we want to have birthday, it should be a, a yearly, the annual reflection time. So we invite our friends in this, and we ask the child to reflect on his last year. What have you accomplished? What have you done? But to turn the whole thing into a cake and candles and this, and what did you get? Nothing. I'm celebrating that I've wasted the last year. We don't do that as Muslims. Time is running. And it's running out. And we all know it. So now, since Allah gave you time, Allah did not bring you to life for seven years only and then you're dead. Not 14 years and then you're dead. Allah gives you 60, 70. Our life expectancy is getting more with all of this medicine and this, especially in the developed countries. So you're getting more time. What is that translating in the mind of people is more time is I got more time to fool around. When is it you're going to wake up, brothers and sisters? That's the question, because time is running out. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, Illa. There is someone that when time passes, it's like he has money in his pocket and there is a, a cut, a hole in the pocket. And every time he puts money, money is running out. And there is someone else, his pocket is strong and intact. Every time he puts money, the money is saved. Not only is saved, it's getting invested. So Allah says, most of the people, their time is running and it's getting wasted. Khusr, yani khasara, yani loss. Illa, except. So Allah gives us a way of life. Illa ladina amanu, wa aminu salihat, wa tawasaw bil haqqi, wa tawasaw bil sawt. An entire map in life. This map and this plan, a Muslim, alhamdulillah, that this surah is in Juzu Amma and it's very short. The young and the old and the man and the woman and the good memory and the bad memory, they all can memorize this surah. Imam al-Shafi'i rahmatullah in his commentary to this surah, he said if Allah Jalla Jalaluhu revealed nothing from the Quran except that one surah, it would have been enough. It's an entire Imam al-Shafi'i faqih, alim, hafid, pure Arabic tongue after spending 10 years in Bani Hudayn. Nevertheless, he says this is an amazing surah because it's a complete way of life. So Allah Azza wa gives you four steps. Now one should ask himself, where do I fall into these four steps? Number one, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنْ Iman. Now Iman is not something that comes, falls from the sky down on you like that. You're walking down the street and then you were just in the right time, in the right place and then Hidayah fell on you and now you will have the Iman. This is what people, even though this sounds silly what I'm saying, but actually this is how people think. Akhi, why don't you get up and pray? Oh, Allah didn't guide me. <laughs> After sending a prophet and a messenger who suffered for, 20, for 63 years, and after leaving a Quran, and you're saying Allah didn't guide you, like what do you mean? Oh, you know, you know Allah didn't guide me. This whole idea that Iman is some boom, inspiration. And you are waiting your whole life for that inspiration. You pray, waiting for it. You go to Hajj, waiting for it. You fast, waiting for it. And it's not something to wait for. It is something that is within your hands. Iman comes in our faith from Him. You learn with a good intention. You learn with a good intention for Allah because you want to know the truth. And that's when your Iman start growing with your Ilm. That's one condition. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal started this whole thing with Iqra' bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. You got to know, you got to read, you got to think, you got to analyze, you got to see. You have to see, not only have sight, but have insight. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us, illa ladina amun. This Iman is built on ilm, on learning your deen. 
learning what, what is Allah telling you? There's no confusion in our deen. There's no confusion, there's no mysteries, there's no secrets. There's no like some you didn't yani, something that you can you know like some batiniya, they don't teach their deen to their children except when they turn forty. This is harakat batiniya, you know, in in the Muslim world there are some groups like that. You are forbidden from learning your deen until you turn forty. I actually met someone who's like that and who became, you know, a Muslim after that. And he explained the whole thing for me. It's very interesting. Because you're not supposed you're not supposed no, 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 it's learning, learning process. But this learning is not about learning only, that's half. The other half, illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Wherever you go in the Quran, you find illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. By the way, this principle, Allah put it for the Jews, Allah put it for the Christians, Allah put it for the Sabi'een, Allah put it for the Muslimin, Allah put it for every deen. The two pillars of Iman are very strong, and the two pillars of action. Iman is Al Iman of Billahi wa Yawmil Akhir. And the learning, Iman and Amal Salih. So what did Allah say in Surah Al Baqarah? In the Ladina Hadi, Wa Nasara, Wa Sabi'een, Na Ladina Hadu. In the Ladina Aman, Wa Ladina Hadu, Wa Sabi'een, Wa Nasara, Wa Sabi'een. Astaghfirullah al Azim. In the Ladina Aman, Wa Ladina Hadu, Wa Nasara, Wa Sabi'een. The Muslimin, the Mu'min. The Jews, the Christians, and the Sabi'in. Man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir. Whosoever believes in God and on the Day of Judgment. Wa amila salihan. And then he did good deeds. Falahum ajruhum inda rabbihim. Wa la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzamun. Universal. Universal criteria. It's not only for Muslims. Illa ladina amanu wa amila salihan. Today, the one who is clueless, what do they do? They go... They, they, they are not learning, nor they are doing. They are doing few things and they think it's enough. So they are not learning, they are not doing. The one who is enlightened goes and learns, 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 until the day he dies and he never gets to do anything. But the one who is few of the few, min al wa min al The few of the few of the few, amanu wa amilu salihah, and then they even continue, which means they learn and they apply, they learn and they apply. Now before I move on, I just want you to no notice there is something settled in this surah. If you know just basic Arabic, you don't have to be a scholar in Arabic language, you will notice it. Allah says, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ insan, Individual, لَفِي خُسْرِ Singular form, insan. Not وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَ لَفِي خُسْرِ no, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ But when it came to Iman, it didn't say illa ladi amana. It switched from singular to plural, which means we have to do this together. Well, asr in al insana singular, lafi khusr. Illa ladina amanu immediately jumped to plural. So you have to get it. You have to get it on your own. That you do this with everyone else. That's why you notice that in Surah Al Fatiha, you don't say, Ihdini as Sirat al Mustaqim, guide me to the straight path. It says, Ihdina. How can I raise my kids if my kids are the only kids who are Muslims or believers or have faith or believe in God? Every other kid they play with, they don't believe in God. They don't have a faith. They don't How can I survive like that? Can you pray Jum'ah alone? Would you fast Ramadan alone and have Iftar alone and have Eid alone? Would you go to Hajj alone? How are you going to live your deen? This is a communal faith. Islam is a communal. It's based on the Jama'ah. Together, 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 communal faith. You t now, now, you came here to pray to Allah, not to anyone else. But you pray with other believers. Salatul Jama'ah, fil masjid. Allah puts that condition in Siyam, in Salah, in Zakat, in Hajj, together, 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 do it together. So there is a hint, illa ladina amanu, together, they learn together. Are you part of a halaqa in the masjid, or a halaqa at your home, or God knows what it is, a circle of knowledge. Are you part of anything learning your deen? Because if you are not, inna al-insana lafi khusr. You're losing. Are you doing some any action to make sure that you are practicing your deen? So it's not theory, theory, theory. When Allah says, say, pray, you pray. Allah says, qiyam al do qiyam. When Allah says, zakah, you give zakah. Allah says, siyam. Are you making sure that you're practicing? When Allah says, take care of the yatim and the miskeen and this and that and this. And make sure you do good deeds and give sadaqah and this. Are you doing it? And are you doing it with an organization, with a group? 
Whatever that organization might be, that's the question. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Islam and Iman is not claims, right? We're very well known to know that Muslims will say Islam is the most beautiful religion. I agree. Are you beautiful too? Did the beautiful make you beautiful? Islam is a solution to the world's problems. I agree. Has it been a solution to your problems? Are you applying or are we just making? Because what is happening is that we keep on praising, praising God, praising faith, this, and then we go home and we do whatever we do, and then we feel good. Khalas, I've done my job. I praise God. Allah is not in need of your praise. Rasulullah is praised universally from Adam till Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. But it is you who join that beautiful crowd of Anbiya and Mursaleen and Siddiqeen by doing what Allah is asking you to do, by doing the right thing, the right thing. Two mechanisms that are even more rare than the earlier two, two steps. The first step is learn your deen, increase your iman. That's half. The second half, make sure that you put it in the world of action. The third and fourth is even now we are getting into more rare, more rare. Which means advise each other because we're all, we all have mistakes. And we all fallible. We're not infallible. We're not like we don't. We're not perfect. We're not angels. So I need reminders. I need you to tell me you, in a nice word. Say the best word at the best time at the best place with the best intention. That's the qualifications of nasiha. Don't advise people in front of everyone. That's called insulting. Advise them alone. Use very nice words. Make sure the guy is not hungry, thirsty, or has to go to the bathroom, and you're going on and on and on with your nasiha. He's not going to listen. Make sure it's the best time, the best place, the best intention, using the best words. But if we don't tell each other like that, what did Allah say? If you stop bringing the good and decreasing the evil, your, your community will, will collapse. Because everyone will become on his own. And what did Rasulullah say? He said something that the Arabs used to say before Islam. The wolves only eat the lonely sheep. Rasulullah used it in his speech. So we might be in this masjid, MashaAllah, we opened the MCC, MashaAllah, 400 people are praying Salat al Dhuhr or Salat al Jum'ah. Excellent. MashaAllah, in the MCC, 2,000 people pray Salat al Jum'ah. Wonderful. But at the end of the day, do we have 2,000 individuals? Because 2,000 individuals could be in the same place or everyone could be in his own place. It won't make a difference. That's why it's not about numbers. Yeah. Read Surah Yasin. Allah sends two prophets. No one believes. So Allah supports them with a third one. No one believes. Finally, one person believes. He comes and says, I declare my support to these three prophets, these three messengers. He say, you do? He say, yeah, I do. Okay, we kill you. And they kill him. Is it about numbers? That's why it doesn't reconcile. 1.5 billion. Okay. The world has 7 billion. And? So the thing is, are you working with any, with your masjid, with your family, with other families, with this organization, with that organization? Are you part of a group effort? Because you know what? You will never learn Islam until you work with the group. You will discover who you are. Your temper will come out, and your frustrations will come out, and your impatience will come out, and your bad morals and manners will come out, and you will discover, oh my God, I thought I was perfect. Until I started working with other people, and I discovered that I'm still perfect, they're wrong. <laughs> we always learn the long lesson, right? Uh, I'm still perfect, they're wrong. You know what? I am not going to do this anymore, Khalas. I'm leaving. We are happy. Learn. And that's why, I mean, when we say Sahaba, that was their amazing thing. How could the individualistic Arabs who had only loyalty for the tribe, how could they come together and help one another and support one another and stay together? And even they're struggling while they're doing it. Sometimes they do it right, sometimes they do it wrong, but at the end, mashallah, they became like the stars in the sky. So, الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق Advice one another, not insult one another. Or not forgetting about one another. 
It's either we don't have a better solution. You either insult him or you forget about him. Can you do something in the middle? Reminder helps the believers. The fourth step, once you do this, you feel like running away. You don't want to do it anymore. So Allah says, have sabr. Be patient. It's not easy. Well, I want to do it my way. Yeah, everyone can do it his way, but then we cannot talk about any accomplishment in our life. When, why, why our country here, the country that we live in, why is it the first economic force in the world? Is it because there is individual rich people in America? Who are they? You barely know the name of two. Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. Do you know a third one? I challenge you. Who yeah. oh, no. well, that, that That guy that 10 years, 15 years ago, 20 years ago was running for, uh, for presidency. You know, from Texas. You know, but that's not. It's because of corporations. What is corporation? Teamwork. That's why our country is number one. But you go to other countries and you find, oh, he's rich, and he's rich, and he's rich. And when he becomes rich, he makes sure everybody else doesn't get rich. Any employee becomes a threat for him. So you see that mentality? Where is it getting us? So... The message that I have for myself, first and foremost, and for my brothers and sisters in Islam, time is running out, and you're getting older, and your children are getting older. May Allah Azza wa make us wake up and do the right thing before it's too late. والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Brothers and sisters يعني, um, I am only one of you and I'm an advisor In the mid 90s from 1995 to 2000 the middle school, the high school, the college students, the youth, what we call the youth, used to come and ask, Sheikh, I can't pray in the school. Can I pray Dhuhr and Asr together? Can I pray Maghrib and Isha together? Sheikh, some, can I eat like from the restaurant like Nan Zabiha meat? That was the question. And we used to say, La hawla wa rahmatullah meat. In the mid 90s, in the mid 2000s, the question became, why can't I have a girlfriend? I'm not going to do zina, I'm just going to be, she's going to be my friend. It became more far away from Islam. Why can't, why can't, uh, why can't I go out with my friends to the bar? I'm not going to drink. Right now, brothers and sisters, the bulk of the questions that I'm getting from high school and college students, does God exist? Just so that you know, that's question number one. And Allah is my witness. And I'm standing here in a very difficult position. Question number one from college students and high school students and young professionals and maybe they are married and have kids. Does God exist? Why do we have to have a religion? Wallahi well, that's the most common question right now. Amongst the practicing Muslims within our community. Of course, your son and daughter will not come and ask you that. Because they know what's going to happen if they ask you that question. The sky is going to fall onto her. But they come and ask me or someone else after they trust that we're not going to go crazy on them. So that's why, alhamdulillah, knowledge has come to you. This weekend, Saturday and Sunday, mashallah, we have a seminar about shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna rasulullah. And it will answer precisely that question from the ayat of the Quran. Because believe it or not, Allah talks about that in the Quran. Like the Quran does not assume, oh, everybody believes in God. It's just we have to make them believe that there is one God. No, 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 no. There are so many arguments in the Quran with atheists. And Allah says, like explicit, this is what they say. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here is the answer of Allah to it. Literally, Allah even brings what they say first out of amana. And this is where the agnostic says, oh, if there is God... If there is no God, we, know we have nothing to lose. But if there is God, we're going to go to heaven. <laughs> Read Surah Al-Kahf. وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا 
And then you have the people, the, even the Muslimin, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ And you have all the situation, and Allah brings this one argument, this one argument, this one argument, and then the Mushrikeen, then the Munafiqeen, and then the, everybody, his argument is mentioned in the Quran and is answered. No one talks about that. So, knowledge has come to your doors in MCC, inshaAllah. So if you can, and you should, put the time and aside on Saturday and Sunday, inshaAllah, we have a seminar tomorrow and after tomorrow and starting tonight there will be a preview about Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an muhammad rasulullah because believe it or not that's where we have to talk right now we're not beyond that and that's something you can spend your whole life you know uh, the highest branch of faith is la ilaha illallah and if your final words from your life is subhanallah or bismillah or la ilaha illallah that has the word of Allah Insha'Allah, دخل الجنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says So may Allah Azza wa Jal save us and save our sons and daughters and may Allah make time a factor of winning not a factor of losing for us May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر May Allah Azza wa Jal make us من الذين تقوا وهم محسنون إن شاء الله اللهم في المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات أن أحياء منهم والأموات إنك قريب سميع مجيب الدعوات اللهم أعز بنا الإسلام وانصر بنا المسلمين وأعلي بنا كلمة الحق والدين وجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين يا رب العالمين اللهم ربنا أبلنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا وآتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار برحمتك يا رحيم يا عفو يا غفار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنعني الأخشاء والمنكر ولا يذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنع